Baker Mayfield's going to have some weapons. He has a good offensive line. Um, he has the good running backs. He has a coach that kind of has designed that scheme tailored around what he needs and doesn't need, uh, can and can't do, which I think a lot of people think that <clears throat> they're they're babying Baker Mayfield or they're sheltering Baker Mayfield. He can't do this, can't do that. He made plays last year down the stretch. Like, I think Baker's a good quarterback. Um, I think he had flashes of being a top 10, like really good quarterback. Um, so in this game against the Chiefs, I think it's going to have to be a shootout. I don't expect a ton of defense to be played. How do you think the Browns are going to attack that Chiefs defense? Well, like during the, the end of last year, and particularly in the playoffs, I think you saw – at least under Kevin Stefanski, the sort of transition from Nick Chubb's offense to Baker Mayfield's offense, particularly yeah. playoff games stand out the most. Like he, there was, there was a point in the Steelers game where he sort of put his foot down and said, no, we're not doing this and ended the game. And then against the chiefs, Nick Chubb struggled in the first half, the game plan worked and he did not play well. Those two things combined struggled. And then after the, the fumble, that uh, was caused by a apparently very clean helmet to helmet mm -hmm. hit by Dan Sorensen. So they have all this happen. They, they, they don't get the touchdown and then they give up the field goal. And there's all this reason, you know, for people to essentially leave the Browns for dead, assume this is going to be over. And it wasn't Nick Chubb. It was Baker Mayfield who came out and sort of willed that team to compete again. Uh, and, and they scored the two touchdown drives in a row. And all of a sudden, you know, there's a chance at least for him to sort of lead or drive to get them to the AFC championship. So I think you sort of saw his medal in that game. Again, you saw accuracy with some of the throws he made, like Rashard Higgins and some of those things, where he's just really, really good when he's on. Um, beyond the fact that Odell Beckham is going to force them out of that single high press across the board, which they're playing, which still galls me because that's just an embarrassing defense to allow a team to play. Uh, he's going to probably force them to get, get, have a safety over the top. So they have too high, at least with somebody keeping track of uh, Odell Beckham helping, whether it's Mike Hughes or, you know, Charkandrius Ward or, you know, those guys, maybe at times luxurious need uh, that that's going to hopefully open up more running opportunities for, for the running game. But the thing, you know, their tight ends make a lot of sense in this matchup. I don't think the chiefs do a great job with how they match up against tight ends. And then the thing I'm looking forward from this offense, because they did it a little bit last year is they basically should model uh, Kareem hunt after Alvin Kamara because they have a player in Nick Chubb, they can put Kareem hunt in space and he doesn't have to be a super nuanced route runner, but he can catch the ball. He can get open a little bit and just get him the ball and force their DBs to tackle him. The thing that sort of emerged, this really wouldn't have mattered to me in terms of how they should use Hunt, but they got Dearness Johnson, who was with the team last year, who's really emerged as a nice player. So if the Browns do want to use Hunt as sort of this space player and somebody who can create uh, on his own, and they need Nick Chubb to come out for some reason, they can put Dearness Johnson in there as another true running back. So I'm hoping that we see more of that. The Chiefs don't have a lot of size at corner, and, and not a lot of teams are designed to be able to have their corners tackle a guy like Kareem Hunt because he's, he's physical and can make guys miss. Uh, my issue with Kareem Hunt has always been his vision. When he was with the Chiefs, he always had a fullback who operated his eyes. And then with the Browns, and it's not entirely fair because he's literally got like the best vision guy in the league and Nick Chubb, but there's so many times where they run the ball and he, he misses something he just doesn't see, but you get him out, whether it's on a screen or out in space, and he's got one guy to read and he's just this dynamic playmaker, the likes they saw with the Chiefs. So I think that becomes a real opportunity for them to cause problems. The Browns did a really good job with that to open up that Monday night shootout with the Baltimore Ravens. Cause initially they couldn't get separation because their corners are so good. They moved hunt outside quite a bit. And all of a sudden the Ravens initially tried to just send a linebacker out there and got torched. So they were sort of forced to play him with corners and he was still successful, but it opened up other opportunities. And I think that's a way for them to create seams in the defense, the combination of having 
Njoku and Hooper potentially working in the middle field. Beckham on the outside. They've got DPJ, who they really like. I don't think he's ready to be like a star or anything, but he's certainly viable as a receiver. And then you add this element in Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt to what I think should be a wild card player. And that's a really difficult thing to sort of match up because you have all these legitimate players that you have to now account for. And then they've got a guy in Anthony Schwartz who's done basically nothing in preseason or the training camp, but he also can run basically a four, two. And if they play him five snaps, the chiefs have to account for him and whether it's him getting a big play or him creating an opening for somebody else that becomes a way for them to potentially create an instant score the same way I fully expect at some point during this game, I expect Andy Reid will create an instant score with some BS screen that nobody's ever seen before that you just couldn't prepare for. And obviously something I'm worried about because Andy Reid is so good with time to prepare. (laughs) 